A significant number of people think we've been visited by aliens in the past. If so, did aliens make the mythological monsters of antiquity? The answer might be closer than they think. Our first clue takes us to Montetautotk, July 13th, 2008. A carcass was found. That's some weird shit right there, ain't it? Like a penguin fucked a rat or something. Lucky bastard. I'm not a zoologist or a respectable member of society, but fuck me sideways with a sorcerer if that isn't an alien. I mean, I couldn't identify what that thing was, and if you ignore those who could, Nobody else could either. I like meat-colored curtains. They remind me of the time I spent in my mother's womb. I can almost taste it. Please ignore the clips in the background. The creature was never analyzed to this extent. So, what is it exactly? There are government facilities nearby. Disease research is a well-known source of hybrid monsters. We made this replica to exaggerate its features and make it monster-like. See? The photo wasn't like that. Guys, it might have been a griffin. Scientifically, of course. These white spots don't mean anything. Makes you think, huh? Somebody took the carcass into their front yard. We don't know whether it was on July 14th, 1.37pm, according to my lawyer. Unfortunately now, no one can identify it, which is proof that it was a real hybrid monster. Here's some more unrelated footage. While some people of questionable intellect think the Montetonac monster was made by humans, those with high enough IQ know it is proof that every mythological creature of our past was in fact made by aliens. If we maybe have now the possibility for the truth to be the fact that it could be a distinct reality in theory is that we can now in the present create monsters than in the past the aliens who are like the future to the present but in the past they could do the same. I mean look at that bird man, that is not how a human looks. Indeed humans do not have serpent hair either, snakes tend to have one head and dogs are usually three dimensional. Here's a chimera. Think of all the monsters. Kairemo, Mitonor, Psexus, Anupsi. Maybe they made them all up. Or maybe they were made. Huh? Where the fuck do you find these people? They seriously think mythological figures were made by aliens? Yes, and we are certain there's evidence for it. Now, I personally think that, in my opinion, my own belief is that these creatures being purely imaginary is not a very good thought. Because our ancestors weren't fucking stupid, you piece of shit fuckwed. Having imagination is a lie by the government. We can see a lot of them in Egypt, as sphinxes, as griffins, as bizarre creatures, and the Egyptians in their mythology and fiction stories said they exist. Check, mate, atheists. Imagine an alien ship far and crossing millions of light years back, arriving at our planet Hymen. They observe a crocodilian stasse and a leonhide. Then they think we would use a mixture of these two species as one normal and would. Therefore, my explanation is proof they this exist. Uh, the Griffin defies logic. I mean, I mean what? Wow, just, just look at it, man. How do you even make one? Charles Darwin theorized griffins were dinosaurs, but could they be alien experiments instead? The answer lies far away, in India. I mean, Pakistan. What's the difference? Here lie the ruins of Mojan Jajo Hadrajao. It's a bit like modern cities. Aliens are like modern in the past, so it was made by extraterrestrials. They had toilets and plumbing. And photocell doors, allegedly. This city was also the epicenter of a nuclear detonation. A small one, which only destroys buildings yay high. We found some skeletons who were in a position that could mean that they died quickly. And some of those even had higher radiation levels, according to the Soviets. Need I say more? Let's all make one. So logically, the resulting fallout made mutant posters. 
Whiplash occurs when the head is rapidly thrust backward and then forward. As a result, I do think that Hindu deities are irradiated tricks who are falsely worshipped, checkmate theists. Garuda is also said to have appeared after a nuclear detonation, like ancient alien knockoffs on the festering corpse of History Channel. Can radiation create monsters? We cannot know the answer, but why well, guess it's pretty logical. We do know the answer, and that is not how radiation works. Garuda was an airplane, it is all very logical. Garuda eats snakes, planes eat snakes, self-evident really. A bit to the east in Vokchang, there be dragons. Could they have been dinosaurs, or were they also genetic experiments? No, but do they can breed fire? That, that is pretty solid argument for aliens, probably also planes. Could some dinosaurs have survived and evolved? Paleontologists lied that dinosaurs died, but I have seen other completely unrelated living fossils. How do they explain that, huh? Since those animals survived, I'm pretty sure dinosaurs did too. And don't come to me with that birds evolved from dinos bullshit. You won't fool or big pop your bitch. Scotland, known for UFO sightings and heavy drinking. Whiplash occurs when the head is rapidly thrust backward and then forward. I have grown a bit peckish. Could you give me a hand for dinner? I'm a bit dinner. <laughs> Now, I don't know fucking about Loch Ness or St. Columba, but if you change the details just enough, it becomes pretty sus, eh? Makes you think? I do wonder if the Loch Ness Monster eats people. The Loch Ness Monster seems to be either a dinosaur or a genetic experiment gone wrong. If so, what could the seven-headed Sumerian sea monster revive them be? Whiplash occurs when the head is rapidly thrust backward and then forward. Who is definitely the one depicted here? We do our research. Trust us. The Hydra was a multi-headed serpent, which does not exist in nature. Whiplash occurs when the head is rapidly thrust backward. Ergo, it was a genetic experiment. We know this because stories were told of it. We survive until today. Krakens are big. Whiplash. John was followed by a big fish as documented in the Bible. Whiplash. Three fucking days he spent there. It is a little known fact that when one animal eats another, the one being eaten generally does not survive. The Bible describes the ribs of the creature as bronze. We can take this literally and of course this means that the fish was not literal. We have ourselves the description of a submarine gentleman. Uh, if I reiterate his point, that makes it true, right? I think we need to look at these subjects at a deeper level. We need to penetrate the proverbial skin and slice a nice clean cut off this meat topic. If alien submarines existed, why were they there? Three words, genetic modification. Some psychopath in Russia stitched together two dogs, creating an abomination. Whiplash. The creature lived for a few days in constant agony, suffering as a result of the inhumane experiments. We only benefited from it. If today we had the technology to give a dog another head, it is irrefutable proof that Cerberus was an alien experiment. If Cerberus was real and had three heads, then there was some way for a dog to have three heads and exist. That means extraterrestrials. So if aliens could talk to us today or have in the past, they have to be at our technological level. Yeah, I got nothing else. Aliens came here and did what we would. Toy with the animals, see what we can create, see what we can gain from it, see what we can play with. Let's have some fun. A significant portion of the mythological creatures were created by gods according to legend. This is yet more proof that aliens were the culprits. But we specifically look at specifically the specific story of a specific creature specifically caught by the Thor. We can specifically see that it was specifically made by specific gods. Uh, please don't look up that that's true. Why would you create something like the Naga? Well, if you create a technology to splice species, then logically you throw away ethics and just go ham. Humans would do this. Any intelligent species would do it. Plus, they look rather spooky. Perfect for the deception and enslavement of lesser species. 
kind of what I do with my kids at home. In 1970, another psychopath replaced the head of a monkey with the head of a monkey. My pa used to take me here when I was a kid. This is where we put the brains of the hookers. Monitor is real, baby. 2003. Lonely Chinese man attempts to create bunny girls. Uh, yep. Uh. 2004. Pigs with human blood are made. Pigs are genetically quite close to humans. So when you eat ham or pork chops, while being perfectly legal, it's almost like eating a human. Where do we draw the line? Why do we even draw it? Genetic modification is proof for the fact that genetic modification exists. If we can now create genetic hybrids, that'll improve the ancient alien theory. Because we are saying that what we discover now is a rediscovery of aliens doing this thousands of years ago. We just don't remember. But is there evidence for genetic splicing in ancient times? There is an old tablet which can be interpreted in a way that aliens arrived during the age of Neanderthals and created humans from them. Please don't look up what Neanderthals were and how genetics work. It's possible, I guess. This is irrefutable proof that aliens tampered with our DNA and consequently that they could have also tampered with animal DNA. There's a lot of DNA out there. This was a huge waste of my time. 